二零二零年第九条题目系有关于分子遗传学嘅。下列嘅 DNA 序列系显示咗昆虫物种 A 某一个基因嘅编码链上面嘅其中一个部分。咁 Part A 咧就要我哋做翻配对啦。以下边一个信使 RNA 系能够正确对应得到编码链上面或有底线嘅序列咧？咁呢個題目呢，就考返我哋有關於轉錄嘅概念啦，就係、是、製造返信使 RNA 嘅。而要製造信使 RNA 呢，我哋就利用返 DNA 作為我哋嘅模板。而 DNA 由於係有兩條鏈㗎嘛，咁所以啦，我哋就要分得清編碼鏈同埋模板鏈啦。編碼鏈呢，就係題目俾我哋嘅，模板鏈呢，今次題目冇俾嘅，但係我哋知道啦，佢哋兩者呢，佢哋兩者呢，係相對嘅，咁所以 A 配 T。G 配 C， 所以啦，我哋都會知道模板鏈嘅 mRNA 同埋模板鏈同埋編碼鏈有咩嘅關係呢 m r n a 呢，原來佢嘅簡基序列呢，就係同呢個模板鏈呢都係相對嘅，咁所以我哋大家都估到㗎啦。T 就配 A。A 就配 U，E 咧就配 G， 咁所以最起碼咧，我哋都知道前頭咧一定係 A U G 噶啦。咁你話寫完一串啦，唔知自己啱唔啱，想 double check 喎，唔緊要嘅，因為 mRNA 係同我哋嘅編碼鏈係一模一樣，除咗個 T 轉咗做個 U 之外，咁所以我哋更加可以肯定我哋嘅答案咧就係 A U G。本身啊，佢就同呢個 TAC 做相對應啦，係咪？而 AUG 同 ATG 正正係咪就係呢一句嘅邏輯啊 ？mRNA 就同編碼鏈係一模一樣，除咗個 T 轉咗做個 U， 咁所以啦，答案順理成章咧就係第一個啦 ，AUG、GUC、GUA、UAC、GCU 同埋 ACC 啦。咁呢個題目最常見嘅錯誤咧，就係由於大家分唔清編碼鏈同埋模板鏈啊。咁所以啦，你係有機會真係揀咗下面嘅，因為你當咗個編碼鏈係個模板鏈，跟住將呢啲 A T G 呢，就將佢做返個相對型 ，A 就配 U，T 就配 A，G 就配 C， 所以呢，有啲同學呢係會揀咗下面呢個答案嘅，咁就錯咗咯。然後去到 Part B 啦，當我哋有咗 Part A 嘅呢一個順時 R N A 啦，我哋就利用返。以下嘅密碼子嘅表，去寫返由呢個 mRNA 所轉譯出嚟嘅蛋白嘅氨基酸序列嘅。呢個題目啦，就考我哋轉譯咯，就係製造一個多肽。嗰時間呢，題目都考緊我哋有關於密碼子嘅特徵，就係不會重疊嘅，亦即係話佢哋係三個三個簡基咁樣去閱讀嘅。AUG、GUC。GUA 咁樣三個三個簡基去閱讀嘅，咁啊不厭其煩啦，做一次俾大家睇啦。第一個嘅密碼子就係 AUG， 咁啊首先啊就係 A， 跟住去到 U， 跟住去到 G， 第一個轉譯出嚟嘅氨基酸咧就係 MET m e t h a l i n 啊。如此類推咧，我哋就有翻呢六個嘅氨基酸序列啦。咁如果頭先喺 Part A 你係錯咗嘅話呢，即係利用咗 UAC 咁樣去砌嘅話呢，你會砌到另外六個嘅氨基酸嘅。咁今次題目好好啦，其實佢都係想 check 返你識唔識得用密碼指表嘅啫。咁所以啦，即使你 Part A 錯咗，當然啦，你係冇分啦。但係 Part B 呢，你寫得到呢六個嘅氨基酸呢，其實你都有分嘅，非常之好彩呀。咁所以呢，有陣時都唔好講到考評局呢好不近人情啊，因為你嘅概念係正確嘅話，而你又表現到相應嘅能力嘅話呢，其實你係會予以得分嘅。跟住啦，去到 Part C 咯喎，咁呢個基因呢，原來就有兩個等位基因嘅，兩個等位基因嘅差異呢，就標示如下啦。第一個等位基因呢，就係 TAC， 而第二個等位基因呢，係已經突變咗嘅呢，就係 TAG。咁題目第一部分就問你啦，咁呢個係一個乜嘢類型嘅突變呢？兩類型嘅突變啦，一個呢就係點突變，或者叫基因突變，就係、是、喺個 DNA 嘅簡基序列上面有個改變嘅。而第二款嘅突變呢，就係、是、染色體突變啦，就係、是、染色體嘅數量啦同埋結構啦有所改變。咁所以今次啦都不難理解啦，就係、是、由呢個 TAC。變咗 TAG， 咁所以佢一定係一個基因嘅突變啦。跟住去到第二部分啦，又係用分密碼子呢個表呢，又去描述一下呢一個嘅突變，即係由 TAC 變咗 TAG 啦，係點樣影響得到由呢個基因所轉譯出嚟嘅蛋白嘅？
對呢條題目第一樣要考我哋嘅就係究竟喺個氨基酸嘅序列有冇一個嘅變化？咁所以題目呢，就考返我哋啦。我哋有返呢兩個等位基因嘅編碼鏈啦，然後再將佢轉譯返變成呢個信使 RNA 啦，利用返呢兩條 mRNA， 究竟我哋所轉譯出嚟嘅蛋白？佢哋嘅氨基酸序列有冇咩嘅變化呢？第一款嘅等位基因出到嚟啦，其實就係頭先 Part B 嘅答案啦。咁如果啦，經過咗基因突變之後，出到嚟嘅蛋白質又會有咩唔同呢？原來啦，去到 UAG 嘅時候呢。佢係一個 stop codon 嚟嘅，係一個令到轉譯停止咗嘅密碼子。咁所以你會發現啦，當個氨基酸去到第三個，就去唔到第四個啦。所以我哋就要寫得出啦，突變形成咗一個中子嘅密碼子，取代咗原有嘅 T R Y。所以啦，由呢個突變咗嘅等位基因所轉譯出嚟嘅蛋白鏈呢，係會短過原先嗰條嘅。咁係咪答完呢一句就算數呢？唔係啊。因为题目系讲紧如何影响个蛋白质啊嘛，系蛋白质系短咗，啱嘅，你讲咗嘅。但系除咗蛋白质短咗之外，仲有啲咩嘢可以讲啊？你就可以就住氨基酸嘅序列啦，同埋蛋白质嘅构像啦。如果讲个蛋白链短咗之外啦，你亦都可以讲翻咧所产生嘅蛋白链嘅氨基酸序列咧，都系有别于原有嘅蛋白质嘅，所以。最後形成嘅蛋白質就會有唔同嘅形狀或者有唔同嘅構造啦。所以好多同學咧都答到第一句啦，也許都答到第二句嘅，但係第三句就好多同學 miss 咗啦，就係、是、冇理會到蛋白質構造或者蛋白質形狀啦。因為題目係講緊如何影響蛋白質啊嘛。如果你淨係講到個蛋白質變得短咗咧，都係火車未到站嘅，因為其實題目咧都係考緊大家啦。喺一個蛋白質入面有好多唔同嘅氨基酸，而氨基酸之間佢都會 form 到唔同嘅 bonding， 去令到佢接成唔同嘅構像，一個初級嘅層次、次級嘅層次、三級，甚至乎四級嘅層次。跟住去到第三部分啦，昆蟲物種 A 嘅個體咧係有兩種嘅身體顏色嘅，一個係綠色，一個就係啡色。綠色身體嘅個體咧係只會具有等位基因一嘅啫。而啡色身體嘅個體咧，有啲就係有等位基因一同埋二啦，有啲咧就只係有等位基因二嘅啫。咁而家題目就問啦，如果昆蟲物種 A 嘅身體顏色只係由呢兩個嘅等位基因所去控制嘅話，究竟邊一個等位基因阿一定係阿二會係隱性呢？然後解釋你嘅答案啦。咁題目都提咗大家啦，遺傳圖解咧係不獲吸分嘅。咁今次咧，我唔特別話啦，我就用翻文字去理解啦。成條題目要考我哋嘅就有關於順合型同埋集合型嘅概念啦。當中啦有兩段片啦，大家一定要睇翻啦，就係、是、無中生有同埋四部成師啦，通曬成課概念噶啦。而家我哋發現啦。綠色身體嘅昆蟲呢，佢就淨係得等位基因一嘅啫，即係話兩個都係 a l l e l one， 咁即係話佢係一個純合型嘅 a l l e l one 啦。而啡色嘅昆蟲呢，佢可以係純合嘅等位基因二，又或者集合型，即係話又有一又有二啦。呢、這個情況底下，又用返四步成思咯。最重要嘅一句説話就係講緊喺集合型嘅情況底下。只有顯性嘅特徵係能夠被表現出嚟嘅，亦即係話，如果啲昆蟲係集合型嘅話，係只有啡色能夠顯示到出嚟，亦即係話啡色係一個顯性嘅特徵，係能夠遮蓋咗另一個嘅等位基因嘅表現嘅。所以咧，我哋就會知道啦，綠色身體所攜帶嘅等位基因咧就係隱性啦。嗱，其實兩個答案咧係一樣嘅，就只係爭在咧佢將個等位基因一係顯性擺喺頭啊。定係擺尾啦。當初教大家四步程式一樣嘅啫，你可以先好似通識咁樣擺咗個立論落去，哦，等位基因一係隱性，然後作出解釋；又或者你先作出推論，然後再得出一個結論，又可以嘅。好，咁又嚟到一點出發啦。今次嘅題目呢，就由編碼鏈開始問起嘅，考我哋兩樣嘢啦，轉錄轉譯啦，同埋基因突變啦。我哋先講轉錄轉譯啦，成個概念呢，就係利用返 DNA 嘅遺傳碼。去製造蛋白質嘅，當中啦，轉錄轉譯仲有大把嘢可以比較啦，就係佢哋嘅模板係咩呢？原材料係乜嘢呢？製造出嚟嘅產物又係乜嘢呢？關於轉譯呢，我哋都要温返書，喎，就係密碼子同埋反密碼子啦。而去到基因突變呢，又去到睇病學拜我啦。嗱，今次呢，雖然就淨係講返一個叫基因突變或者個點突變啦。今次嘅題目呢，就係講返啦。哦，原來呢個等位基因都係控制個昆蟲嘅身體顏色啫。但係下次啦，可能真係講返一啲基因遺傳病都未定㗎喎。
。咁之後呢，就可以問返大家咯，啊，兩個父母交配呢，咁咁佢哋生出嚟嘅仔女有幾多嘅機會率係會有呢個基因遺傳病啊？又或者佢作為一個大病者嘅身份啊？然後綜合成條題目呢，就係、是、講蛋白質嘅製造啦。當中啦，亦都想提翻大家有關於蛋白質嘅角色啦、結構性嘅角色同埋功能性嘅角色。細胞膜都有蛋白質啦，骨頭肌肉都有蛋白質啦。功能性嘅角色就係酶啦，去加速翻我哋新陳代謝嘅化學反應啦。而啲蛋白質能夠正常運作係好靠佢哋嘅構像，即係佢哋嘅形狀嘅。咁之前咧，我哋都有條 essay 嘅題目咧，都講過蛋白質嘅。咁啊，快快手睇返段片溫下書咯。咁去到最尾啦，都想提返大家嘅。咁其實過往都有好多題目呢，係有關於轉譯啊、轉錄啊、點突變啊，或者基因突變啊，或者啦啲轉錄轉譯嘅比較嘅。咁如果你係未溫書嘅話，快快手睇返啲片，拎返啲 concept 咯。Two two question nine is about molecular genetics. The following DNA sequence shows the coding strand of a part of a gene found in the insect species A. And for part A, we need to do the matching. Which of the following correctly shows the sequence of the mRNA, the messenger RNA, corresponding to the underlying sequence of this coding strand? So this question is checking us the concept of the transcription, which is the synthesis of the messenger RNA, and we need the DNA as the template. But we know that there are two strands in the DNA, so they are the coding strand given by the question and the template strand, which is not given by the question. But we can still write it down because the coding strand and the template strand, the DNA base sequence is complementary. Therefore, we know that the DNA sequence of the template strand. Is T A C C A G C A T N A T G, but the question is asking the sequence of the M R N A. So how can we know the base sequence of the M R N A? Concept is that the M R N A base sequence is complementary to the template strand. So we can use the template strand to write down the M R N A. So we can see that T A C. So for the first codon, it should be A U G. Apart from this method, we can also use another one. Is that the base sequence of the mRNA is the same as the coding strand of the DNA, except having U instead of T. Therefore, we can directly use the coding strand, which is given by the question, to construct the mRNA. We replace the T with the U, so we have A U G G U C. G U A U A C G C U and A C C. So we have the answer already. So the common mistake in this question is that the students they cannot distinguish the template strand from the coding strand. Therefore, they may choose the second one as the answer because it is complementary to the base sequence of the coding strand. And after part A, we have the mRNA, and by using the following codon table, we need to write down the amino acid sequence of the protein translated from the mRNA. This question is checking us the concept of the translation, which is the synthesis of the polypeptide.、And、meanwhile, it also checks us the concept about the non-overlapping codon. That means when we are doing the translation, we are using three bases as one codon. One codon, one codon, and I would like to take this chance to show you how to read the codon table. The first codon is A U G. First base of the codon A. Second base U, and the third base is G. Therefore, the first amino acid translated is M E T, methylene. And then we use the same logic. We can write down the other five amino acid to con the exam to construct a six amino acid protein sequence. 第二三四 to 第二 to construct a six amino acid sequence. And what about if you choose the wrong answer in part A? Actually, you do not get the mark from part A. However, if you use the codon table correctly and write down this six amino acid in the polypeptide sequence, you also get one mark. So you can see that HKEAA is very understanding and very mercy. Once you can show that your ability to read the codon table and really use this one to construct the correct amino acid sequence of the protein, you still get one mark. And then for part C, it was found that the gene has two alleles. The difference between the two alleles in the underlying sequence is highlighted below. So you can see that in the allele one we have TAC, and in the allele two, the mutated one, we have TAG. So for the part C one, which kind of mutation is it? 
So this question is checking us to distinguish gene mutation from chromosome mutation. So for the gene mutation is the change in the base sequence of the DNA in a gene and the chromosome mutation is the change in the structure or number of the chromosomes. For example, the Down syndrome, we have one more 21st chromosome. Therefore, this question is very straightforward. TAC to become TAG. And in part two, with reference to the codon table, describe how this mutation affects the protein translate from this gene. So in this question, we can use the coding strand of the allele 1 and 2, construct the messenger RNA first, and then you can see that one of the codon is UAC, and the other codon will be UAG. And then we need to determine the difference of the amino acid sequence of the protein produced by allele 1 and allele 2. And you can see from UAG, it is a stop codon. Therefore, you must be able to talk about that the mutation result in a stop codon instead of the TRY. And as a result, the protein chain produced will be much shorter than the original one. It's not enough. After that, you still need to recall the impact of the different codon on the amino acid sequence and the conformation or the shape of the protein. So therefore, if you do not talk about the length of the protein chain, you can talk about that the protein chain produced will have a different amino acid sequence from that of the original one. Therefore, the protein formed will have a different shape or different conformation. And you can see that if you would like to answer the question completely, so you need to talk about the protein in the end. And for part three, individuals from the insect species A exist in two forms, green bodies and brown bodied. Individuals with a green body have only allele one. Some of those with a brown body have both allele 1 and allele 2, while others have only allele 2. And if the body color of the insect species A was only caused by the mutation of this gene, that means the body color is controlled by the allele A and allele 2. So which allele would be recessive? And explain your answer. So in this question, the critical concept is about the homozygous condition and the heterozygous condition. So you can watch these two videos out of nothing and the crazy genetics to do the revision. And according to this concept, we have the critical idea is that in heterozygous condition, only dominant characteristic can be expressed. Therefore, you can see that for the brown body insect, they have both allele 1 and allele 2. That means they are heterozygous. The phenotype shown in the heterozygous condition is the dominant phenotype. Therefore, the brown body color is dominant over the green body color, or you can say that the green body color is recessive. Therefore, allele 1 carried by the individuals with green body is recessive. And the difference is just the arrangement of the answer. You can talk about the answer directly first, or allele 1 is the recessive allele, and then do the explanation. Or you can do the deduction first, and then draw the conclusion. So let's talk about the curriculum mapping. This question starts from the coding strand, and then it checks us the concept about the transcription, translation, and the gene mutation. So for the transcription and translation, we know that the DNA, they contain the genetic code, and then we use the DNA as the template to produce the messenger RNA, and use the messenger RNA as the template to produce the protein, the polypeptide. Therefore, we can compare the transcription and translation. What are the templates, raw materials, and the products? For the concept of the translation, we need to do the revision about the codon and anti-codon. And for the gene mutation, it can be related to the disease approach. In this question, the mutation is related to the body color, but maybe next time, the gene mutation could be related to the genetic disease. So next time, the question may ask you that in the family, the parents, father and mother, so they give birth to a son. So what is the chance of this boy uh, suffering from this genetic disease? What is the percentage? And I would like to take this chance to talk about the role of the proteins, the structural roles and the functional roles. And some examples, they could be cell membrane, bones and muscles and enzymes. 
And the most important idea is about the confirmation. How can the protein perform their roles? No matter structural role or functional role, it's really based on the confirmation or the shape of the protein. So you can watch the essay video before to do the revision. And after that, I would like to mention that there are lots of questions about the transcription, translation, codon, anticodon, and also the pond mutation before. So you can watch all the videos for the revision.